Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, by the time you complete this lesson, you will be able to identify and define homonyms uh, and use homonyms and frequently confused words correctly. And we've got some more audio here. Words that sound similar but have different spellings and different meanings are called homonyms. For example, eight and eight are homonyms. Eight is the past tense of the verb to eat, and eight is the number eight. Sometimes, words may have the same spelling and sound alike or different, but have different meanings. For example, the noun wind, meaning air that is blowing, and the verb wind, meaning coil around or curve. Furthermore, some words that look similar are often confused, such as lose, and loose. Yeah, so context is really important with, uh, you know, the, these ideas here, the words get confused. So, you know, how is it being used in the sentence? So which version should you be picking? Homonyms, you know, context things. Clues. What's that? Using context clues from the reading or the passage. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know, like they, they say here, are you, you know, I ate a large meal uh, or, you know, there were eight children. You know, you, you look for, especially when you're taking exams and things, you know, how is the context being used? And, the, you know, there's all kinds of these. Um, I, grading um, student papers when I was at OU, this one, I, I'm not only writing with my mouse, I'm writing with my right hand when I'm left-handed, so. We'll see how this goes. So you got that. Oh, I'm getting better already. Dang, right. Look at me go. And then, and I, I, you know, I see this in actual formal writing. I see this pass by, um, you know, like copy editors and everything. So we have lead, lead, and lead, right? So <clears throat> lead, of course, you know, to lead an army, to lead a football team, whatever it is. Lead, right, is the chemical element. You know, you have lead in your pencil. But this is the past tense of lead. So if I led an army, if I led a football team, that's the correct one. And this is a really, really common mistake that I've run into a lot. And it's just one of those things that I've seen it so much now, it's become kind of a pet peeve. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think I started noticing it a lot when, when, when I was at OU and I was grading a lot. Um, but yeah, that, that's something you, you, you know, you want to look for is those words that sound alike. A lot of times they're spelled alike. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's something that, not just context matters, but down the road, if you're writing, this is where the editing really comes into play, where you want to take some time to, once you've written something, to go back through and look at it. Still today, like I, you know, I, I think we all do this to some degree. I'll write something the way it sounds. You know, I'm, I'm typing something out. I'm thinking about it phonetically. And, um, you know, especially with there, there, and there, and your, and your, and all that stuff, you'll, you'll run into situations where you're like, oh, you know, wait a minute, is that the correct form? And slowing down and actually getting, uh, taking a second to, to look at something um, and edit some will really help you out. And yeah, so here we have a lot of common homonyms, um, by and by. So be at work by noon tomorrow or Will you buy me a magazine? So one is a verb and one's basically a preposition. Uh, did they, and then did they lose the soccer game? The younger girl had a loose tooth. One that you see a lot, real simple, quick, easy mistakes that, that you'll see. Uh, I ate a sandwich for lunch today. He has eight brothers and sisters. So, you know, one's the verb, one is the number. You're going the wrong way, W-A-Y, versus I weigh less now than I've, that I've been on a diet. Did you hear what I'm saying? Here and here, the books you need are over here. Uh, the, uh, and then this one, then and than, 
which we have something over here about then and then are often confused. Remember, then refers to time or sequence. Then makes a comparison between items. Rule of thumb, the, the way that I always look at it is um, just thinking about math class. That's where I learned greater than and less than. So thinking about comparisons, that's how I, that's what I always go back to. So looking at that, you know, I mowed the grass and then trimmed the, the bushes. We're referencing like a point in time. Whereas Steve likes drag racing more than hockey, we have a comparison. And then new and new, that new movie looks funny. So we have a, an adjective compared to a verb. She knew the answer right away. Past and past, that's one that gets a lot of people. Uh, the story takes place in the past, right? That's a moment in time versus Justine passed the text. The, the text on, is it, that's supposed to be test, right? Justine passed the test on her first try. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that should be a <laughs> T-E-S-T. Uh, but yeah, so um, you have a verb there instead of, instead of um, a noun. And then the last one, C and C, you know, real common silly mistakes. Rico can see better with his glasses, right? That's a verb as opposed to the cottage overlooks the sea. Uh, and then again, we're, we're, we're talking about the, the pronoun uh, confusion. So the pronouns it's and there are easily confused with the contractions it is and they are. Uh, there is sometimes, there, there is sometimes confused with their meaning at that place. Real common to see that. And let's see what we have. Oh, wait. Okay, there we go. So. All right. More of our homonyms and our test taking tips. Examine the surrounding text to determine which homonym a writer tends, intends to use. Become more familiar with other homonyms by checking. Okay. So again, just like in the last set, you're gonna look at the context in which it's used. That's gonna be the best way to describe it. So Capri, you wanna go ahead? Sure. Did you see who just passed by driving in his sports car? Which correction should be made in the sentence? Change C to C, change past to past, change by to by, change new to new. Uh, the correct answer is B as in boy. Okay. Oh, wait. B as in boy. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so uh, that's, relative, re yeah. that's relevant to time, right? That's, that's, yeah. that's a point in time is the past. So we wanna change that because he passed by uh, and that was an action, right? It was a verb. So change right. past to past. Okay. I get that one confused a lot. Well, not confused, but just instinctly. I just put P A S T, you know, like. Yeah. Well, and the thing too is like they're kind of related, you know, like the time passing and, and you know, so the action is, is sort of weirdly related to it. And, and those in particular, you know, could drive you crazy. Right. All right. Yeah. I didn't think about that. You're right. Yeah. And I, I we're going to get another one here real soon uh, that drives a lot of people crazy. Um, I think that comes up in the, in the next book, though. All right, so we got a letter here. Dear Miss Nichols, thank you for purchasing your policy with driver's car insurance. As a policyholder with blank types of coverage, property damage, and injury liability, you are entitled to many benefits. If you become involved in an accident, this policy will help pay for your medical bills, legal fees, and one year's income. If you cause the accident and other people are injured, this policy will help offset the cost of blank medical treatment. Also, the policy will help pay to repair the, their vehicles or other property that was damaged in the accident. Our goal is to provide you with the highest possible level of service. We want your insurance experience to be a positive one. After all, the last thing you want when, you're, when you've been involved in an accident is to struggle with insurance issues. You can be assured that the response team at Driver's Car Insurance is blank to serve you. 
As a policyholder with driver's car insurance, uh, you are more blank, just another customer. We value our policyholders and take pride in our products and service. When you buy a policy with us, you haven't purchased a policy. You have bought the peace of mind that comes from knowing that when you need us, we'll be there for you. We look forward to being there when you need us. Okay. And we just had Amina join us. Hello, Amina. Okay. So as a policyholder. It looks like her audio is having issue. Okay. So fair I'm enough. Sure she's saying it back. Yeah. Okay, well, so we'll just keep picking on Capri then. All right, so as a policyholder with two types of coverages, which one are we going with? TWO. TWO, yep. Uh, and then if you cause the accident and other people are injured, this policy will help offset the cost of? D, there. There, right. That's the possessive, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can be assured that the response team at driver's car insurance. Here, H-E-R-E, B. H-E-R-E, yep. And the last one, uh, you are more than, than C. Right on. Yeah, you're going right to them. Yep. So that's the comparison, right? Uh, yes. We'll go ahead and... Go on over to the workbook. All right. <clears throat> and here we go. Here's some other uh, really frequently um, confused words, homonyms. So accept and accept. That's one that you'll run into quite a bit, uh, right? You accept an apology uh, and you know, E-X-C-E-P-T, you can think of as exceptions. So everyone came except Sasha. That is, uh, it, it, it excludes. And th th those are kind of weird because they're almost uh, antonyms too, right? Words that, that mean the opposite of each other. So accepting and accepting are, are almost uh, the, the opposite of each other. I struggled I with this so bad in school that <laughs> I had to literally come up with a like trick and I did since except like with excluding it has an x it was like I was thinking of like x x them out like yep, get yep. Rid of them. I, yep. I struggled with it up until college <laughs> yeah, anything, if you see that EX in, in front of a word, you, you know it's typically exclusionary, right? Exclusion, exception, uh, it, it's usually eliminating or, or paring down or singling out. Um, so yeah, that's a good way to remember that one. But that, again, you know, that's one that you, when you're, when you're typing really fast and you're just thinking about it phonetically, you'll wind up doing one or the other and not really thinking about it. Uh, and then higher and higher, right? The balloon rose higher and higher into the air as opposed to our company will hire two new employees, the verb. No and no, uh, I know you wrecked the car, right? And then when asked if I wrecked the car, I said no. There we have past and past again. The story takes place many years in the past, right? Past being a place in time versus the quarterback past the football, the verb. Right and right, uh, again, that's one that you hear. There's absolutely no difference in the way those are pronounced. Um, so I had the right answer to the question versus the action of, you know, scribing or typing. I usually write emails instead of letters, W-R-I-T-E. And then some and some. Uh, she gave me some money versus the mathematical SUM, the sum of two plus two equals four. All right. So let's I don't take have this workbook. You don't? You don't have this work one? Um, press, press restart because I had to fix that one. 
and I just did it about five minutes ago, so it should be there. Yes, I see it now. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Here we go. All right. And then our tip here, again, you know, as you read, use clues from the passage to determine whether the correct word has been chosen and that its meaning is clear. If necessary, study the spellings and definitions of common homonyms. That's part of the problem here, too, is, is sometimes there's just no, you know, and this is the issue sort of with the English language. You know, we have a lot of words that sound alike. We have a lot of words that are, are you know, spelled exactly the same but have different meanings. And some of it just comes down to practice and encountering those words again and again. Um, you know, there's, there's tricks here and there, but sometimes it's just knowing the difference between right and right uh, and, and, and other examples like that. So Capri, you wanna start us off here. The weather caused this plane to fly higher than the others. Um, the answer is C. Yes, yeah. So right, that's the, the wrong form of hire. We're not hiring the plane. Uh, so we need H-I-G-H-E-R. Okay. And then go ahead, hit this one too. Um, I don't know where to look for the watch I lose. I think the correct is D. Yep, so lost. it's lost instead of losed. Yep, that one's, you know, you. You see this one some, um, but you know if you're especially if, you, if you're sort of sounding it out, you'll 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 catch on to that pretty quickly. Okay, and here we go with another letter <clears throat> and Mexican food. All right, I read the latest issue of Cooking with Flair magazine and was surprised by your article on Mexican food. I think the author, like many people, has the wrong idea about Mexican food. When many people think of Mexican food, the fast food and chain restaurants across the United States come blank. Much of the foods served at these restaurants is not authentic Mexican food. In fact, most restaurants have changed Mexican recipes or invented new ones to fit tastes north of the border. These restaurants serve a type of food that is really Tex-Mex, a term that applies blank dishes served in the restaurants that are typically Mexican here in the United States. Today, people who eat at Tex-Mex restaurants will find many dishes that appear to be Mexican, but do not come from Mexico. Dishes such as chili con carne, chili with blank, chili con queso, chili with cheese, and nachos are Tex-Mex dishes and not authentically Mexican. These dishes may have a distant connection to Mexican cuisine, but they are more or less regional recipes from the southwestern United States. It would be nice to blank an article that discusses real Mexican food. I expect a higher level of journalism from your magazine. If you want to write about Tex-Mex food, fine. However, you should call this type of food what it is and not confuse Tex-Mex with authentic Mexican cuisine. So back up to the top here, the fast food chain, fast food and um, chain restaurants. D. D to mind, that is right. Okay. And then these restaurants serve a type of food that is really Tex-Mex, a term that applies a, a right, a preposition to dishes served in the restaurants that are typically called Mexican. And then dishes such as chili con carne, chili with C. meat, yes, M-A-T. And that's, again, that's just one that you, you know, you just have to encounter M-E-E-T or M-E-A-T to know the difference. Uh, and it would be nice to... B, read. Read, yep. An article that discusses real Mexican food. Okay. And a boil water alert. The Rosebud City Council has blank out a boil water advisory for all residents of Rosebud and some of the surrounding cities. The advisory will be in blank until water samples tested through the state laboratory come back negative for bacteria. This advisory has been issued because high levels of several types of bacteria have been identified in the city water supply. 
In response to the situation, city officials have added chlorine to the water. However, in the interest of safety, residents, particularly those whose ages are below 15 and above 65, should select option or should <laughs> blank to consume the water until the Department of Environmental Protection determines whether it is safe to drink. The city council advises drinking bottled water if possible until the water can be determined to be safe. If it is necessary to consume water from your tap, the water should first be brought to a rolling boil for one minute. This action should kill harmful bacteria. Water can be cooled and consumed. We ask all of our citizens to remember that safe water cannot always be identified by blank or smell. See, so please follow the boil water advisory until you are informed that your water is safe to drink. You can use tap water for cleaning, disinfect dishes and cooking utensils by soaking them for at least one minute in clean tap water that contains one teaspoon of household bleach per gallon. All right, so the Rosebud, Rosebud City Council has... A, scent. Scent, yep. Out of boil water advisory, so the advisor, <coughs> excuse me, the advisory will be in... I think the answer is C, but I selected A. Okay, it is C, actually. Okay. Uh, and th this one, effect and effect and effect is another one that's always getting confused. Uh, so the first thing to remember, effect is a verb. Effect is a noun. Um, the best way, especially if you're writing and you're choosing what to use, Effect is a consequence, right? It's an end state. That's how you know the difference. Most of the time, not always, this, this wouldn't be a, a particular case where you could do it, but you can <laughs> replace effect with consequence. So if you think about the, uh, the economic effect of the COVID pandemic, right? You could also say the economic consequences of the COVID pandemic. But that, this one is another killer. You, you, you run into affect and effect a lot. Just remember affect, verb, effect, noun. Okay. And uh, ages are below 15 and above 65. Should be wait. Wait. W A I T. And then in this one, we ask all of our citizens to remember that safe water cannot always be identified by. B, sight. Sight. That's another one, right? Because there's three different forms of sight. Uh, you know, this is like a, a, a location. If you're on site for a movie or, or TV, right, you're, you're shooting on site. S-I-G-H-T, referring to vision. And then this is citation. So if you're citing something, when you're when you're writing a paper or something, or you know, uh, I'm citing you know Abraham Lincoln, da 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 da, uh, that would be C I T E. Okay. Now, because you have been a valued USA Wireless customer for the blank five years, we have an exciting deal just for you. If you extend your existing cell phone contract with us for another two years, you will be eligible to upgrade your current service plan to the premium members plan for only an additional $10 a month. This change represents a savings of $240 a year for premium service, an offer that other cell phone providers can't match. You cannot pass up a deal like this. The premium members plan offers unlimited text messaging and unlimited picture and video messaging. In addition, if you extend your contract with us within blank days of the date of this letter, you also will receive unlimited international calls for only five cents a minute for the first year of your new contract. For the second year of your contract, you will return to the standard international calling rate of 15 cents a minute. If you ever wanted more from your cell phone without spending extra money to get premium services, now is the time to get the premium member plans for a fraction of blank usual cost Simply call 1-888-555-0095 or blank us an email to let us know that you want to extend your contract. So USA Wireless customer for the... B. Past. Past. Right. And then if you extend your contract with us within... D. Eight. Eight. 
There you go. Eight days. Premium member plans for your fraction of? A, it's. Very good, right? That is the possessive. We're talking about cost here. It's usual cost. And then blank C. us. C, C? Yes. right. So we're gonna write the email. All right. So that might be a good place to stop. What do you think?